going on? Todd here. Welcome to the Wednesday webinar. Sorry for being off the last two weeks. A uh, little bit of traveling and uh, a lot of bit of traveling. So appreciate that little break. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Questions up. Good morning. All right. Um, so let's hit it this morning. Let's hit it. Um, we had some, uh, we, again, more news within this very well-contained range. Uh, actually, let me, let me double record this. Hang on one sec. Let me just double record this and then we'll get rolling. Okay, uh, so good morning again. Welcome. This is Wednesday webinar. It is one minute after nine. It is April eleventh, and uh, we had some good news coming out this morning. Uh, markets are uh, very, very range bound. Uh, specifically, gold bonds. We just got some pricing data that was very weak, and we're seeing seeing some movement there. The indexes, after a really good move down in the early part of uh, two thousand eighteen, was. Uh, they're kind of going into consolidation. It's been crazy trading uh, for the last couple of months. And then just the last, I, I took off last week. We're in Florida, just got away with the family and uh, was trading every day on vacation. And I came back like wanting a vacation from that vacation. So uh, it was just crazy. Um, so now I'm finally back, getting settled back in. Just did yoga, didn't take a shower yet. Just, uh, relax in here but it looks like the markets are ready to go here finally um gold bonds um indexes we put on we came into a, a slightly long position today i'll show you that show you where we are in the indexes and uh have some fun hey terry what's going on ken all right uh before we do this let me just do my quick poll as we always do number one uh are you a client and your screen should change are you a customer of tradinganalysis.com. Yes, no, possibly in the future. Your screen should change. Throw it right up there. Waiting for the magic 61.8% response rate, and then we will move on. About a third of you are our customers, so welcome. And remember, we have the, the member webinar, the weekly member webinar today at 10 after this session here. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you for that. Number two, your approach to Elliott Wave. Um, Elliott Wave, which is our preferred style of market analysis. What's your feeling on it? I use it often. I know enough to be dangerous. I'd like to learn more. I think it's evil voodoo witchcraft. <laughs> okay, awesome. Good amount of you, 40, 48%. I'd like to learn more. 25% I know enough to be dangerous. 33% use it often. Only 3% of you think it's voodoo. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Uh, last question. Markets you prefer to trade? I think multiple answers are possible here. Stocks, stocks, options, futures, cryptocurrencies. And I think that hits the, the main one. So, yeah, I think multiple answers are possible there. In the lead in the early voting, 63% in stock options followed in the second place with 57% stocks, 40% in futures, only 13% cryptocurrency. Boy, cryptos have gone quiet. I've been short Bitcoin for two weeks and like you don't even have to look at it. It doesn't even move anymore. Like it'll change, but ugh. Uh, so 60% stock options, 56% stock, 42% futures, and 10% crypto. Okay, cool. Thanks for that. Uh, perfect. So let's show my screen right up there. Let's start with the indexes as, as we always do. Um, yeah, yeah, Nargis. Um, yeah, you know what? Let me let me dive in. Let me give me about fifteen minutes, and then I'll answer that question. The offer on the wealth, uh, the webinar I did yesterday. Uh, if that's cool. But just to give you a quick answer, Nargis. Um, I, I don't want to. Just, just hit the, the tradinganalysis.com homepage. That's my homepage, tradinganalysis.com right there. And uh, to take advantage of that offer that I gave you yesterday, just hit that orange button right there. 
and you're good to go. And you will be included in the Elliott Wave and Options training session that is um, posted and ready um, for you to view. Okay. I'll, I'll give you more information about that. Okay. So, you know, here's where we are in the indexes. And uh, it's been very choppy. I so want this market to break down. I so want it to break down, but there's a difference between what you want to have happen and what you hope happens versus what's actually happening. Right now, I give the slight edge to this wave count, which is a triangle, um, which means we have a little bit more of a move up. I did put some long positions on yesterday. It's going to sting a little bit on the open here uh, with the gap down. Um, there's some news with Trump and Syria and Russia and, and uh, all kinds of fun stuff and uh, poor pricing data. So we're going to get a little bit of a pullback here, but you know, it's amazing how well the Elliott wave pattern is held in here. Um, a, B, C, D, E. And in fact, I did a, an Elliott wave webinar yesterday showing a chart on February 28th. I was like, guys, I have a feeling we're going into a triangle and this count, was I did this count like back here, you know, and and basically looking for B, looking for support, a move down in C to then find support, a move up in D. So I was on this early. I still may be wrong, and if we break down through those those uh, twenty five thirty two lows, I'm gonna be wrong. And I tell you what, guys, I hope I'm wrong. I really want to see this market move lower. But for now, the evidence uh, gives a slight advantage to this triangle count, which says we should move up to 2710. Now, the way you get that is alternate waves in a triangle are often related by a 0.6 relationship. So if you do B, multiply that by 0.618, project that up from C, and that's 2710. All that, all I just said there is take this distance, 2547 or whatever, up to 2790. Multiply it by 0.618. Take that distance. Multiply it by 0.618. Take that distance equals Y. And then just do this price plus Y. And that's going to give you 2710, right? Same thing. If you do A compared to C, alternate waves in a, in a triangle are often related. C and A, look at that almost got the bottom 2580 so 0.618 relationship of a compared to c is right there so now we're doing b to d is 2710 okay pretty straightforward um you know not not too much else to really talk about there um the move up specifically um it's a little dodgy in here, and I have a really hard time making this a five-wave move because this is a traditional, each of your waves in a triangle, A, B, C, D, and E. So A, B, C, D, and E, each of them um, needs to be a zigzag. And a zigzag is just simply A5, 3, 5 move. Okay, it's kind of hard to count this as five. And then we're doing a, it's a, it's been a very choppy, uh, as I get off the 195 here down to the 60, it's been a very choppy move up. And, you know, it's going to be, we're starting to see a little bit of sell off here today. So I am positioned with butterflies. I did it live uh, yesterday to get up into this range over the next two weeks. But if we start to, if we start to, to push lower, fine, I'm going to cut the trades. I'll quickly go over to my alternate count, which is this, which is that the top is in, okay, which is the top is in. I love trading the short side. I think up here I did a, a live video with Elliott Wave International and, and just traded this thing live with SPX options and made like seven grand in two or three days, traded that live. Love trading the short side. So if we get back down through 2532, if this count that I showed you fails, we're going right to work. Minimum distance is 100% of green one compared to green three at 2462. A more textbook wave three relationship is a 1.618 relationship of one compared to three, and that's at 2252. So if you start breaking down through here, I'm looking for 2462 and 2252, and you can be assured we're going to get right the hell after it and aggressively be short with our subs. All right, let me take questions. Uh, the, uh, Nathan, the Jan correction looks the same size duration as 2015 and 2011. Do you agree? Uh, all right, let me take a look at that. 
Uh, get out to the weekly. This okay. So what Nate is saying is this Jan correction looks the same size and duration in 2015 and 16, which is right here. It's actually smaller, Nate, so far. So 2015 and then 2011. Um, yeah, the corrections that we've seen since the 2009 low. This is, I think, this was a 19 or 22 percent drop. Uh, this was similar. You know, we're we're this is very small compared to what we've seen even in the midst of this 2009 credit crisis rally or this 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 call it quantitative easing rally so um this is much smaller and Nate to your point that's why i am proposing possibly that this is a triangle of the orange circle 4 degree which is specifically the primary degree will square up with this wave 2 back here in uh april uh in uh, june of 2016 and and while this triangle holds, this looks to be of similar, you know, magnitude to this guy. When if the correction really gets going, you know, we're gonna we're gonna be much larger than these corrections, and that's gonna take you out of this trend channel. So I, I, maybe that's your point. Yeah, triangle versus easy top. Yeah, I still got the beard going. Can't shave until those January twenty six highs are taken out. It was a, a challenge I put out there on uh, Instagram. Oh, I wish I didn't do that. Um, okay, so let's take a look at NASDAQ, and then I'll hit the macro markets. I see you asking about crude, Chris. I'll definitely hit that, so just stay with me. Um, I'll pick up the pace. So here's the other thing that uh, causes me to think that this is um, a triangle. Here's the NASDAQ. It looks like a big old three-wave move up in B, and um, you know, trend waves should be five-wave moves. And if this is, in fact, the top – this really should carve out a five. This carved out a three, up, down, up. So that makes me think this is a B wave, which is C, which is D, which is E, which is one more move to go. The bounce in the NASDAQ, however, has been pretty pathetic. The NASDAQ is not, I mean, this bounce is pathetic. So though I'm tra trading this primary account, I have no problem going to my alternate plan, game plan B, which says the top is in. And this is going to be just simply boom, wave two. Okay, I, I hope it is. Um, this is an NDX SPX ratio down here. So you can see that the NASDAQ, the NDX SPX ratio has been falling, which means the NDX is relatively weaker than the SPX. Okay, so um, that's this tech rec that everyone's talking about. So while we stay below here, and if this ratio continues to go nasdaq is the underperformer the rut looks very comfortable in this triangle small caps have shown some pretty good relative strength um this guy really looks fine uh to get up to about 1580 uh 1590 area uh alternate d versus b a 61 relationship of b compared to D's at 1590. So the, the rut kind of suggests to me that the triangle's in play, where the NASDAQ suggests to me that the top is in or in a new downtrend. Don't know yet, can't know. You can't foretell the future. All you can do is put on high probability, low risk trades with all the information you have right now. You can't foretell the future and you gotta be cool with that. ZZ top is in, John. I don't know, brother, you tell me. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know, I'm just trading it day by day. I don't know. As I said, I think the, the slight edge goes to no, uh, but I really hope I'm wrong. Can I show screen, please? Yeah, I am showing screen, Steve. Um, check your toolbar. Uh, makes sense to see the triangles, usually most complex. Like, there you go, Andrew. Good point there. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'll hit Facebook, Rick. Uh, let me just take care of all the index questions, Scott. Um, oh, Scott, thanks for the email, by the way. Oh, I got to show this. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Scott, please don't be offended. I didn't respond to your email yet. My mom yelled at me. My mom does my books for my business, and I didn't respond to an email from her from two days ago. She yelled at me. So please don't be offended. I won't show your email and stuff. So Scott Scott put some, some quality. I don't know how he did this Photoshop work together for me. Look at this. Oh, my God. And then he put another one up there for me. 
My God, how did you do that, Scott? <laughs> oh, here's another one. That's scary. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. You're the man. I gotta. I apologize. I gotta. I gotta put that out there. All right, back to business. That's pretty funny. Uh, back to questions. Z, uh, like ZZ Top, sometimes you never can tell. Yeah, right. Uh, Tom, also, what if instead of a correction, we have been in a diagonal fifth since February 9 of 18? February 9 of 18. February 9. Possible. Uh, so what you're saying is a diagonal up. So this is one of the diagonal. This is two of the diagonal. And we're going up in three of the diagonal. Is that what you're saying? Yep, possible. Not likely, but possible. It's really, the NASDAQ is, you know, the NASDAQ is a less severe bounce than this. It really is having a hard time moving up, but it, it could, it, it very well could be. And if you think about a diagonal and a triangle is really the same thing. It's just where does E or wave five of the diagonal or triangle end? And uh, it's really a very similar thing. So I'm just pulling your questions up to read them here. Uh, Luis couldn't get in the SPX. No, you're going to get it at a better price. If you couldn't get in in our SPX trade yesterday, you get a better price. Uh, hockey players are starting beer time. Hell yeah. Your poor wifey. That's freaking funny. Says Julia. <laughs> it's not a, obviously, you know, it's not a real picture, but that's funny. Uh, Rip Van Winkle before this is done. I don't know. CNBC has already given me a hard time about it, but all you can see is me looking at your screen. No, uh, I'm showing my charts. Maybe, uh, Steve, check a different, uh, Steve says you can only see me looking at my charts. Let me, uh, let me stop sharing my webcam. You should see scar. You should see charts. Uh, okay, so that's that's the indexes. Let's hit uh, the macros. Let's hit bonds and gold. Let me go over to IQ. Okay, so gold has been unbelievable. Chris says you can see both. Okay, video's fine. All right, yeah, just check your settings, uh, Steve. Steve, why? Uh, okay. So, you know, for, gold is at every opportunity to uh, to move up on all those down days in the stock market. But, man, you know, we got some bad pricing data. Uh, consumer prices, I think I read worse than – oh, my God, shut up, Rick. News. Oh, Rick. Uh, CPI slipped 0.1% uh, last month, the first and largest drop since May of 2017 after climbing 0.2 in Feb. So that's at the consumer level fell the first time in 10 months. So that's not good as the Fed's going into three and possibly four rate hikes. You don't like to see that. So gold is threatening yet again to break the 1360 area. I have this as a five wave move up, triangle in D, or sorry, triangle in B, and then C wave move up. Traditionally, when you get a post triangle thrust, the, uh, the expected upside is a 0.618 relationship of the prior A wave following the B wave break. So just like the triangle, right? You take this distance, whatever, 1,050 up to 1,378, multiply it by 0.618, project it from the end of the triangle, which I'm proposing to be here. So whatever a 61% of that relationship it is, project it up from there, and that gives you 1,543. Gold, when this thing finally goes, the amount of buy stop losses that are going to go off are going to be moss, just massive. So I might try to put something on up here, like pay something real cheap, a way out of the money called debit spread, you know, pay nothing for it and just try to catch a massive move up when this thing finally, if this thing finally goes, you probably be able to risk, you know, one to make seven or eight or nine. So we're going to be keeping an eye on that. Um, bonds and gold have... I think diverged. If bonds are going to move up, I'm going to have a really hard time with this wave count uh, in the in the uh, in the bond market. These are 30 year bonds. Uh, I'm, I'm giving you the end of a correction and a wave two correction that began way back here in March. This is a massive, nasty, complex WXY correction. Um, and then I'm proposing that the downtrend took us through the 40 year uptrend line in bonds. It goes back to 1981. We're down, we do a wave four, down a wave five, we're doing W, doing X, we're doing Y. Now, if gold's going to break out, uh, it's going to try to pull bonds higher. 
Okay, uh, let me let me let me stay on track before I show you the correlation. So let's figure out where the upside resistance is in bonds. Two v, oops, two v one. 61% is at 148 and 27, 30 seconds. 50% retracement is a perfect retest of the 38 year uptrend line that was broken, now offering resistance. So you're talking 140, 48 to 50 area should be resistance uh, in, uh, in bonds. Now, I just want to look. Usually there's a good relationship between uh, bonds and gold. Instrument overlay, uh, QGC, POW. Let me just see what this correlation looks like. So gold is in the green and bonds are in white. Sloppy, right? I mean, there really is no, I mean, there was, you just got to kind of massage it a little bit. I mean, you can see there's a decent relationship here following, but all of a sudden, 2018 is when they is when they snapped. Very big divergence right here, right? Gold, uh, gold's going up, bonds going down. So there's definitely a push pull relationship there, and that I don't. I mean, it happens sometimes. You know, there's divergence here, comes together, divergence here, and then they they come on back. Good period of pretty much opposite relationship there. There's a couple year or two there. So they don't always go together, but this could be the beginning of an opposite uh, inverse period. So just got to watch how bonds handle the break of that four decade uptrend. Okay. Um, I feel like with the momentum that's going to happen in gold, you know, it could really pull bonds higher and keep in mind, you know, this is a wave two wave two can go to a 50, a 61, 78% retracement. So I could bring you all the way up around here, 150. So that's four bucks higher than four points higher than where we are now. So we just have to watch how that goes. Since we're on the macro train, we'll do dollar. I, I still think dollars in a triangle. A lot of people are trying to tell me to be bullish on the dollar and I'm just not there yet. There's no evidence of an impulsive rally yet. Uh, I think we are in a triangle wave four. Uh, that looks like this. One more rally up should suffice for E in the triangle to give you a short opportunity to drop on down 88, 87, 86. And if you break 84, long term uptrend in the dollar is in major jeopardy and we are in the dollar is in trouble. Okay. If you break through um, 84, that's a problem. Wave one high. Okay, so you should have a buying opportunity, but I think you can get the dollar lower. Uh, Terry says, tell them to resize the webcam. Okay, thanks, Terry. Um, all right, let me finish up crude since we're doing the macro conversation. I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I was thinking we're on a B wave here in crude. And it's all of a sudden getting a little strong here. We're coming back to retest the highs. I am not sure. It, it, if we start to really break above this high, then I'm going to have to take green B, put it here. And this is one, two, one, two. And crude's about to really, really move higher. Uh, in fact, let me do that. I have a feeling that's going to happen with this dollar weakness. And the fact that crude is showing some... I guess I would I would say with deflationary numbers, crude should be moving down. But I think that takes the today's number takes the impetus off the Fed, you know, not be so aggressive raising, which should keep the dollar weak, which makes commodities bid. So let's go ahead and make that change. You know, the the, the one point six million relationship is seventy three uh, spot one seven, uh, hundred percent is a sixty eight spot six zero. So. Um, let's go ahead and consider this B wave done, and we're going to do a C wave rally up in crude. It's a tough macro landscape in here, guys. It's tough. It's got me. 
Okay, so that's a good that's a good macro run through. Uh, all right, what else you got? What else you got? Just the op, totally opposite Rob of the Euro. Uh, just it's just upside down. Uh, I think Euro. I don't. I don't even have foreign exchange quotes. I I canceled them. <laughs> it it doesn't move anymore. Uh, Terry TLT. Yeah. Yeah, TLT is going to be different because it's not a 30-year bond future. It's a 20-plus year, so include some shorter data maturities. Um, it would just simply be, it would be this. Uh, no, that's another count. It would just simply be this in TLT. So that would be one, and this is two. 61% would be 123.83 and then 125.9. Those are your upside resistance in TLT. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll hit Bitcoin. Let me just hit the uh, the other hot stocks. Let me just go fast here. Um, Facebook, 164.25. I, I still think we're in a, uh, a fourth wave here. I, I need to make this adjustment on the wave count. I thought it was a simple triangle, but you know, if we break above 167.18, then I think um, yeah, it's strong for, for Facebook. Uh, let's see. A, triangle B, and C. So A, B, C, D, E, you know, 167.20 is obviously going to be uh, resistance there. If we break through there, then... That's going to be a problem. But if we hold below 67.20, then I do think we're in a wave five and we can get that drop sub 150 in Facebook. Uh, somebody was asking me about Disney. Disney's a, Disney's funny, man. This stock is wicked, uh, which is fairly ironic. Um, if you look at, you know, I have this thing as a big triangle. And and Disney's wild. If you start breaking below 97, then, then the pattern's invalid. Um, if you believe in it, if you like the story, you know you have four dollars of risk to make forty dollars on the upside. If you like the story, I mean, this is the end of the triangle. It, if you start breaking below ninety-seven, Disney's in trouble. So this is the attractive part of a triangle. You can risk five bucks to make fifty, but your probability of being right is probably less than twenty percent. So take that. You know, however you want, but I've been watching this thing, and even in here, this was wicked price action in Disney. Uh, so that that's possible. Uh, we still have in our with our customers, we still have the MSFT. Microsoft's been in a beautiful sideways triangle. Uh, that trade's doing fine for us. Uh, let me show you the positions we do have open here. Uh, let's go over right here. So Microsoft, with our customers, we've got an 87 half, 92 half, 97 half uh, put fly <clears throat> in the 20 Aprils. Uh, we're settled around <clears throat> Body of the Butterflies 92.50. We've got a little bit of a uh, little bit of cheese in that trade, and uh, you know, market's going to move down a little bit. But again, same triangle count there, Microsoft. Uh, the other trade that we put on with our customers. Yesterday uh, was an SPX uh, upside call fly. So we did a 2680, 2700, 2720 call call fly uh, on my sister's birthday, 23 April. Uh, and the reason we did that centered around the 2700 strike is the upside objective in D wave of the triangle, which is right there. Okay, this morning's obviously going to prove challenging. We'll see how we handle the gap down. But, uh, you know, I, I actually did account for it. Um, because I think this is the wave count right here. Um, within C of D of the triangle. So so A, B, and then we need a five wave move in C to complete the pattern. So I'm thinking this morning's pullback is going to be wave two, three, four, five. I will hit Bitcoin here in a second. Let me just see where the market opens. Uh 2641. So it's probably just a wave two pullback here. Uh, 2616. We should we really should hold above these levels right here in the wave two pullback. All 
I'm just watching how my positions open. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, we're just minor, minor. So that's that. Uh, okay. Let me just see what other. Oh, Facebook. Uh, I did Facebook. Yep. Uh, Brian, are you bearish on the market? You're breaking my heart. I had a whole deep, like heart to heart with you in the beginning of this this uh, this webinar. <laughs> Um, on Apple iPhone, can't see a thing. Is that the reason you're on an Apple iPhone? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've never done a go to webinar on an Apple iPhone. I love the, I love the effort. Uh, yeah, there's got to be a way to be able to switch between a camera and my screen. There's got to be a way. Yeah, Brian. Uh, just I'm gonna post this up. Check on my homepage or on YouTube. I'll put this up. Oh, the other thing, guys. Uh, I will do Bitcoin. I put a new uh, vlog up yesterday so will you guys go and, and watch it even if you don't want to hear me see my boring life just let it play in the background and then go hit the, the thumbs up button that'd be great appreciate it here i'll uh copy link address swipe to the left i'm on the phone too richard okay very cool uh here's my latest youtube vlog i did a lot in there I, I actually go to YouTube and CNBC and uh, uh, I don't know, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, okay, so that's that. Um, so gold's up 0.79%. So we're on the move in gold. We'll see if that guy can break. SPX is only down 0.5. Uh, so here's – oh, Bitcoin, I have it updated in my other my other workspace. I'll have to show you that. Ah, we'll, we're going we're gonna to leave it there. Um. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Uh, we're actually up money this morning. That's cool. How's that possible? No, I'm not. I'm flat. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to leave it there. Uh, also, listen, here's the deal. I just did a big, big course for um, all customers of trading analysis. I didn't sell it. Most people would sell it. I put, uh, a, there's about a 15 or 20 hour course about options in Elliott Wave with the whole production, like with the whole green screen, you know, the whole HD production. I get geeky with the technology that is available for members. I should have sold it for about $500 each and I could have, but I didn't. And I just made it available to all my members. So when you come in as a member of Trading Analysis, you get this introduction to options and Elliott Wave course, which again is 15 parts. So I made an offer in a webinar as I was des uh, describing yesterday, or yesterday, earlier on the webinar, um, all kinds of things. We talk about the beginning options trader, how to approach it, how to set up, you know, how to look at, a, at an option quote, how to you know, get between the bid ask spreads, save money there, understanding applied volatility, introducing spreads, debit spreads, credit spreads. And we go into live trading um, the next morning. This is the trade where I put on the live SPX trade and I was short for the big move down. I made seven grand in two, three days on like 3000 in capital. Um, so that was done live member follow-up video. Then we go into Elliott wave. And of course, I put the high production value. So this course, again, I should have sold this for three or four hundred bucks and you know made a bunch of money for my business, but I did it for free uh, for my customers. So everyone who's a subscriber, this is just a little bit of a. Okay, guys, welcome. Um, again, sorry for being a couple minutes late. I'm always late. I, I always say this. This. So so if you're a member, you get this for free. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to take a uh, trial, come in, tradinganalysis.com. You guys, most, I see the same names here every week. Time to come on, learn what we're really talking about, and uh, get access to all the trades. And that's going to be right there. Tradinganalysis.com, learn about our premier subscriptions, okay? Take advantage of it. Don't make me disappointed that I gave this course away for free. <laughs> My members deserve it. I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, so that's that. So again, just take a trial, uh, convert over to a paid member and you will have access to that course, uh, which I thought came off really well. All right. Um, how am I up money today? 
I shouldn't be up money today. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, the SPX. Huh. All right. Well, I'll take it. All right. I'll do Bitcoin for you. I got to pull up a different workspace. Members webinar in 25 minutes. Okay, um, I, I do think we're kind of coming into a bounce area here, um, be kind of coming to a completion. Uh, you know, the, the, the move down from February 20th is, is pretty extended. Um, actually, let me check. Hold on one second here. I have a couple versions of of motive wave of uh, yeah there we go okay so I, I think this move down is just about coming to a completion we are still short we're short from 6900 or no we're short from 70 I forgot 7900 I think I have a stop at break even just I haven't looked at it throughout this wave four there's nothing really to do um, I think we have one more move down then we bounce up in B so I think Bitcoin is just about cooked on the downside um, and ready for a bounce. Ethereum is going to show a similar wave five completion. So I think this is a wave five move. There's a big old thick fib support zone that we're starting to hold. And it looks like the bounce is coming. So I'm going to go ahead and secure that low in, oh, sorry, in Ethereum. This is Ethereum. Uh, I'll go ahead and secure that low and, and put the bounce up uh, right there. Okay, there's a whole floor of support there. Um, so I think a low is coming in there. Uh, Litecoin has actually shown some pretty good relative strength. Also about ready to bounce based on this count. Uh, this is something that I'm a little bit more comfortable with right here. Uh, being, again, the final wave five, which complete W of A, uh, and then get the B wave bounce. So I don't think it's the low in the crypto space, but I think we're going to bounce from very oversold status in just this counter trend B. So um, we're getting a pretty good push up there. And again, you could have a, a decent move up, but not the low in the cryptos that everyone's ex expecting. Ripple, same thing. Um, you know, there's a nice little zone of support here in Ripple, about 43 cents. And uh, it should be C of Y of two after this long extended correction. And again, we should be able to get this bounce. This guy says the low's in. I might need to adjust this in Ripple. Um, but every other crypto is saying we should have a counter trend B wave bounce before new lows are made. So I don't think we're out of the woods yet. Uh, Rob, good question. What levels does the VIX have to get to to convince you the vol is coming? It's not, I don't care about the VIX really. I really don't. I just, I just, for me, I just look at the indexes and uh, 2532 is where, uh, I'm going to I'm going to eliminate my my wave count that we're in a triangle. So 2643. I mean this bounce is I mean this sell off is nothing. I mean it's just very quiet. Um so uh, for me I'm going to eliminate my triangle count when we break 2532. And there's just been a lot I mean look at this daily chart. I mean we went from beautiful trending markets to Oh, man. I mean, I gave back. I'm up very well this year in profits, but I gave back about a third of my profits of 2018 in here. And that's the difference, guys. I think, and that's one of the most important things I've learned as a trader. I used, I could always make money trading, but giving it back in poor markets was my biggest problem. And it took me learning Elliott Wave to stop that. That's the biggest thing that Elliott Wave did for me was to recognize when we are in a non-impulsive motive wave market and we're in a corrective market. All my positions are theta positive right now, and I'm very lightly positioned right now. Everything is theta positive. Microsoft, SPX, this is an old, this is an old Tesla trade, just a way out of the money call spread that's not going to work. Everything else is theta positive, just non-directional, slight positive delta bias on the upside. Um, but Ellie Wave for me taught me 
once the market is no longer trending, scale back, protect your profits, and options open a whole world of being able to take in theta on a non-directional bias because I have context that Ellie Wave has given me. So for me, again, I've been trading for 20 years. Um, my first professional trading job was in 2001. I started trading in 99, so 19 years, I guess. Biggest thing was keeping it in lousy markets, not giving back your profits. I've given back a third of the profits I've made so far this year, and that's enough. And I'm just going to let this thing go. The last two, three days, I worked on my YouTube vlog. I'm working on a Motive Wave training course. Don't care. Yeah, overlapping. In Bob Miner, Ian, Bob Miner is actually in my YouTube vlog that I just I just put out there. So be sure to guys get in there and watch that video and just hit that thumbs up button if you could. Uh, where's the chat window? Okay, perfect. Awesome, guys. Hey, thanks. Uh, we'll leave it there. Just, uh, just, just hang in here. Don't, don't get crazy while we're, uh, we're in here. If we start to start to get some momentum, just keep in mind until we break that twenty five thirty two. I still think this is the count. You know, we could, we don't even have to go to twenty seven ten. I mean, we could just do a really shallow little D wave here and an even shallower E wave. We could go sideways for a while. The triangle within the triangle, anything's possible. Just, you know, sometimes actually, I used to do this. I used to take a yellow sticky note and. Um, I used to take a yellow sticky note if we're in consolidation and just put it on the computer, remind myself you can't trade in there. So, um, all right. Are you locking in a mortgage rate? You know, I'm not. I'm not. I was up in, I was up there looking at a couple open houses this weekend, and uh, I feel like the bonds are coming back. You know, in I locked in, you know, Six years ago, I bought this place. Uh, I got a three nine nine jumbo, um, and now like it's going to be four point five. Like, all right, it's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. So, um, but I got to tell you, in six years, I bought the low in the real estate market. The appreciation in Jersey, I'm very disappointed with. Very disappointed with. Uh, other areas have appreciated a lot more. So, all right. We'll leave it there. Guys, have a good one. Uh, members, we'll see you there. Uh, again, jump into the uh, to the membership if you want to take advantage of that training course that, you know, again, I usually could sell that thing for 500 bucks and make, make my year's mortgage payment selling that thing, but I didn't. I gave it to all our members just to provide value, and that's what I want to do. So get in there and take advantage of that value and in the training course. Okay. Thanks, guys. We'll leave it there, and I will see you members in 17 minutes. See you guys.